We spent 10 days aboard the Ruby Princess cruising to Alaska from San Francisco in August of 2023. And in that 10 day stretch, there were some things we really liked about our experience on the Ruby and some things that sort of rubbed us the wrong way. So get ready. Here's our list of the top five things we loved and the top five things we didn't love about our cruise on the Ruby Princess. Let me take just a moment to go over the criteria for this list. It's really pretty simple. Princess must be responsible for both the positive and the negative entries on the list. For instance, if the weather was really crummy, that wouldn't be Princess's fault, so that wouldn't make it on the list. Now, by the same token, if we were to go into a restaurant on shore and have a really fantastic meal, we wouldn't give Princess credit for that either. It has to be something that directly involves Princess to make it on the list. I always like to end on a positive note, so let's start with the five negative things we noticed about our cruise on the Ruby. We had a great trip, and my wife and I both agreed that it was hard to come up with five negatives, so some of these may be kind of nitpicky, but here it goes. Number one, we have problems getting our drinks delivered in the buffet. One day we each ordered a Diet Coke from a server in the buffet and the drinks never arrived. On another occasion, we ordered the same thing through the app when we sat down with our food and our soft drinks finally came about 20 minutes later. So this is where things stand right now. We ordered two Diet Cokes about 20 minutes ago. This still shows them as preparing. They aren't here yet. Now, 20 minutes ago we sat down with our meal and here's what's left of my hamburger and a slice of fruit. Here's what's left of my wife's hamburger. Literally one bite left. We got a couple of waters that we drank to help wash it down but we're still waiting on the two Diet Cokes that we ordered about 20 minutes ago. By that time, we'd already finished our meal. Now, this only happened twice during the entire cruise, so it wasn't a major issue. Since we had the drink package, we weren't really charged for the soft drinks that never came anyway. Still, it was a hiccup in what is usually great service on Princess. We're going to stay on the subject of liquid refreshment for gripe number two. My wife and I both like sweeter wine, so we tend to order Moscato with dinner. Now, at our first dinner in the Botticelli dining room at the back of the ship, we got our Moscato with no problem at all. However, the next time we were there, our server told us that they didn't have Moscato. Well, we told them that we had gotten it there before, and he managed to find some for us. We were told that it had to be gotten from a different bar than from where the dining room usually gets their drinks. Now, I don't know why some bars are stocked differently from others, especially with wine, but I think that's something that should be looked into. Our next beef is a minor one. I told you we really had to scrape to come up with five things. On your cabin TV, there is a selection that says that you can look at your stateroom folio. But when you select that, it tells you to look at your folio on the app. Well, if you can't see your folio on your stateroom TV, then I say don't have a selection that makes you believe you can. Time for number four, and this one comes from my lovely wife. The ship has several public restrooms, and she noticed that on occasion, some of the ones she visited weren't very clean. During the trip, I did notice the cleaning crews taking care of the restrooms several times, but I also did see times when trash cans were full or the sinks were dirty, and maybe we just caught them at a bad time, but there were times when the public restrooms were just a bit messy. Finally, it's time for number five on our list of grievances, and this one is actually two gripes in one. We love going to the casino and spending some time playing the machines. On the smoking side of the casino, either the air filtration system wasn't working well, or there were just too many smokers for it to handle. We noticed a lot more smoke in the air than we've noticed on any other Princess Cruise. So that's complaint number one. Complaint number two is somewhat related. I did a quick tally and I counted 111 machines on the smoking side of the casino, but only 68 machines on the non-smoking side. Come on, princess, even things up. 
So those are the five things we didn't enjoy about our cruise on the Ruby Princess. Our five positive observations are on the way. But first, please give this video a thumbs up. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to the Backroads Tourist Channel? I give you two videos each week, one on cruising related stuff like this one, and one on strange, bizarre, beautiful, and unique destinations all across this great country of ours. I've got some fun stuff coming up in the weeks and months ahead, and I don't want you to miss any of it. So subscribe today. I'd appreciate it. All right, you've heard the negative list. Now let's get to the five things we thought were terrific on the cruise. Leading off the list is the bed and pillows in our stateroom. Lots of people have commented on how cozy the beds are on Princess, and we definitely agree. The pillows are wonderful too. They were just the right size, nice and fluffy, and I'll tell you, after a long day of walking around and enjoying Alaska, it was great to end the night in a comfortable bed with great pillows. Let's stay in the stateroom for our second positive comment. Now, I have to give you a heads up. It's going to sound like a complaint at first, but stick around to see where I go with this, okay? The first few nights, we noticed a strange noise coming from an air vent over the bed. At first, I didn't really pay much attention to it, but then it seemed to get louder and louder, and this is what it sounded like. I brought this to the attention of our room steward, Sebastian, and he said he'd contact the maintenance department. Within 15 minutes, we got a call from maintenance and they asked if they could send somebody up right away. The technician was knocking on our door within minutes, and he told us that if he couldn't fix it, they'd gladly move us to another cabin. Since he'd need to remove a panel to get to the vent, he asked when we were planning on leaving the stateroom so he wouldn't bother us. Well, we left for lunch, and when we came back, the problem had been fixed. We didn't hear any more noise for the rest of the cruise. This is a great example of great customer service. The steward quickly contacted maintenance who immediately sent somebody to take care of the problem. It wasn't a big inconvenience, but it was handled quickly and efficiently. The third thing we liked about the cruise was the staff. On every Princess cruise we've ever taken, we've always thought the staff was great. But this time, they seemed even friendlier and more willing to go the extra distance to make sure we had exceptional service. Whether it was a bartender giving us a private show, a server offering to take a picture of us, or our room steward making towel creations to help my wife celebrate her birthday, we found the staff on the Ruby exceeded our expectations. Number four was the entertainment. Now, you know, there's always some shows in the Princess Theater that we like more than others, but that's just a matter of taste. Overall, they were all high quality. Also, normally, I'm pretty critical of the guest entertainers, but on this cruise, they were all great. There was also a lot of entertainment in the piazza, which is so, sort of like the town square of the ship. The entertainment here was incredibly varied. They had totem pole carving, fun games that pitted the passengers against the crew, very interesting fruit carving demonstrations, live music, and much more. Plus, in the theater, they had a talk by Libby Riddles, who was the first woman to win the Iditarod dog sled race. The entertainment options were eclectic, but they were all very interesting. And finally, at number five, after a long day of vacationing, we like to come back to the cabin, plop down on that comfy bed that I told you about, and watch a movie. Princess has a great selection of in-room movies available on demand. Some of these movies had only been out of the theaters for a month or two, so kudos to Princess for having a well-stocked movie catalog. Have you cruised with Princess lately? What have you liked? What disappointed you? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. In our opinion, if you put the positives on a scale with the negatives, the good would definitely outweigh the bad. We like Princess, it fits our style, and while our five negative observations may have been annoying things to us, they weren't bad enough to keep us from cruising with Princess.
Thanks again for watching. I'm Jeff, and I'll see you on the back roads or on a future cruise.